it's not that um, there was any fear of being partisan as much as there's such opportunity when you focus on the pressure points that we can work on together for things that young people care about, irrespective of party affiliation. I have a new show on free form, tackling the big questions about the future of this country. How, why, when, huh? For CalPen approves this message, I know you guys made a concerted effort for it to be nonpartisan. And I wanna know why that was so important for you guys. The last couple of years, people had, had approached me saying, can you host a political show? Here's what we have in mind. And I would read the pitch decks and they were good, but a lot of them were kind of vitriolic. You know, they were people yelling at each other or they had a very particular point of view that didn't consider the full breadth of experience that different people have. And I wasn't really comfortable with that, mostly because that's just not how I talk to people. Like I'm, I'm not a yeller. Uh, and so then I thought, well, what, what would we actually want if we could have our own show? And my, my uh, writing partner, Raman, and I thought, well, look, we love The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Um, it's funny, but I don't love reacting to the 24-hour news cycle because that's not a, it's not necessarily hopeful. What else do I love? I love CBS Sunday Morning. Um, that's the old man in me, but that's like, it airs on night, you know. Me too, me too. <laughs> you know, like 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, you're a little hungover, you have whatever <laughs> leftovers you're eating on your couch. And it, it like, it's the warm hug that you need. So we're like, we wanna, I wanna combine both of those shows. I want it to be something that I could watch with my conservative friends that they would enjoy. I, I would want it to be something that my left-leaning friends enjoy. Um, and the reason for that is that we would talk about issues specifically, not uh, candidates and and definitely not what I think a lot of shows fall under the trap of. I have no interest in pitting fact against opinion. So instead what we decided to do was, look, let's look at micro topics. It's a half hour show on free form and boom. So we don't have a lot of time. So for example, our, our episode on climate change, we're looking at um, and how young progressives and young evangelical Christians work together on climate change issues. Nobody ever talks about that. They each come at it from a different perspective, right? Young progressives approach it from a science perspective, young evangelicals from a faith perspective. But that's almost irrelevant if you're talking about what they want. They want climate change legislation or they want local ordinances to be passed in a particular way. That's a missed opportunity to tell a story. So we're telling that story and focusing on things like that. If 100% of young Americans showed up to the voting booth, we could have a completely different country. We could have more national parks, high-speed rail, or make our flag this amazing photo of Dwayne Johnson eating sushi. It's not that um, there was any fear of being partisan as much as there's such opportunity when you focus on the pressure points that we can work on together for things that young people care about irrespective of party affiliation. So that's why we wanted to do it that way. I have this new show right now where I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to talk about issues, but not in a boring way, sort of like in a, in a young, cool, conversational way. So like, basically this is an advice call. Any advice for me? You need to be younger. Okay, so just act younger. No, like be younger, physically, like younger. Okay, um, sure. What was it about this election that felt so crucial for you to use your platform to speak to these topics now? I think it was honestly more scheduling than anything else. <laughs> it's <was> like <laughs> I was on another show. <laughs> So we couldn't we couldn't do it, and it was the schedule freed up. I'm like, I want to create my own. I want to I want to create my own version of this. And and look, one of the amazing things about discourse right now is whether you're talking about um, young people in the Black Lives Matter movement, whether you're talking about young people that you see in these Trump boat parades, like. Regardless, young people are involved in the communities that they live in and clearly very passionate about whatever they are passionate about. So the opportunity to create a show that hopefully all of them can enjoy because it's funny and talks about issues that affect all of us. What's your second best advice? Make an issue-based show about geopolitics in the positive space that uses your personal experience combined with less polarizing messaging that motivates young viewers to get engaged in the political process and gives them actionable advice on things they can do to create change in their community. Okay, yeah, that's definitely one idea. But I was thinking like, like what if I what if I make a video with that WAP dance, but like fully, fully commit, you know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. nope. throw down and nope. would that be okay. something that they would like? Hello? For example, our first episode, you know, we're talking about how and when the voting age was lowered from 21 to 18. 
all I really knew about that was, yeah, 1971, 26th Amendment, you could vote when you're 18. The reality is that that movement started right after World War II when veterans were coming home. They were 18 and 19 years old. Their friends had died fighting for our freedom, liberating countries from the Nazis, and they weren't allowed to vote. And that's when that movement started. And it took that long, up until 1971, for people at 18 to be able to vote. That affects all of us. I don't care who you're voting for or what you believe or what your politics are. Thanks to a bunch of righteously pissed veterans, you can now vote if you're 18 or older. That's the story of how we had the right to vote when we turned 18. That's the story that we want to tell. And we're telling it in the context of, I don't know if you can see our set behind me. Our bookshelf has Angela Davis and Ronald Reagan. We have, uh, everything is designed to be either the context of political and social and activist philosophy over the years, and also things that are celebratory. A ton of space stuff, a ton of women in science, a ton of like, you know, what are, what are the benchmarks of when people actually voted on things? What did Congress or local governments do? What did they fund? And how did that help us? Like, the set needs to be celebratory. It should not be um, polarizing at all, because that's not the show that we're making. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of I Have a Question. Talking to people is like literally one of the best parts of my job and I'm so glad I get to share it with you. And also thanks for sticking around to hear me babble at the end of every video. If you wanna see more, be sure to like click over here and also like and subscribe down below. Do it.